my office is near the choir ready room. So I get to hear all the practicing. And I've been hearing that song for a while. It was beautiful this morning. Take your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter number 5. This may be a very short message. I um, worked on another message this morning, got up here early. Believe it or not, while y'all were singing the Star Spangled Banner, I was still in my office working on this message. It just uh, came out of nowhere, Brother Burner. Sometimes that happens. So if God don't get in it, it's going to be short, all right? <clears throat> I'm looking for everybody. All right. Looks like the crowd's off this morning. Just the school and teachers. That's fine. That's fine. Are you in Ephesians 5? Are y'all in Ephesians chapter 5? That sounded better. Let's stand. Verse number 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not once or not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither foolishness, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done to them in secret. Lord, help us this morning, I pray, to follow your leadership. We ask you for divine unction and liberty in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. So the verses that I've just read to you covers a lot of different subjects. <clears throat> There's a lot of different subjects that are addressed in these verses, the first 12 verses, he starts out in verse number one telling us to be followers, be followers of God. That word follower means an, an imitator, a disciple. Be therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love. And then he starts into this list of, of sins in verse number three and down. He mentions quite a few, some of them didn't even seem to be related. Verse number three, but fornication, that, that's, a, that's a strong Bible word. And what it means is it means two people that are not married doing things with each other that only married people are supposed to do, okay? We'll just leave it at that. But it's a very, it's a very strong Bible word, and God str strongly forbids that. Some things you should wait till you get married, to the person you're married to, and do those things, Okay? And uh, the world doesn't like that message. The world thinks it's okay for little children and teenagers to do things that only married people are supposed to do. But the Bible's clear about that. Fornication and all uncleanness. All right? And it's not necessarily talking about not washing your hands. It's not talking about having uh, dirt under your fingernails. We're talking about something way more serious than that. Okay, the Bible uses the word uncleanness to talk about sin, anything that would be considered sinful. I want all you young people to look at me while I'm talking. There's no reason to look at the person beside you, okay? I'm the one preaching. That, that, that word uncleanness is used to, des, is to describe sin, all right? Now James talked about cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. He's not talking about using hand sanitizer, okay? He's talking about in a spiritual sense, okay? God's really not that worried about dirt. 
as much as he has sinned, okay? In fact, there was, him and his disciples were going through, uh, uh, from traveling from one city to the other and got hungry, stopped in at a man's cornfield, started pulling some ears of corn off, which back then was permitted for travelers to do it just to keep from starving to death because they didn't have truck stops and gas stations along the way. But you could stop at a man's cornfield, pull a couple of ears of corn off, and you could eat them, and that was okay. And the people got mad at the disciples and said, you, they didn't wash their hands. Jesus said, it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, it's what comes out. All right? And uh, so, but God's a, God's a God of cleanliness, and we're not, we're not saying don't wash your hands. I think you ought to. But the uncleanness in verse number three is talking about spiritual things and sinful things. Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness. You know what covetousness is? Covetous, that's what I preached last Sunday morning for those of you that were here at Calvary. Preached on that man that had all those, had all those uh, fields and had to, he said he was going to pull down his barns and build bigger barns. That whole story was about covetousness. That was about greed, being self-absorbed and just can't get enough. That's what he's talking about in verse 3. Here's what he says. Now watch this. Let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Are y'all, y'all understand that? That's pretty clear. Don't let these things that we just talked about, the fornication, the uncleanness, and the covetousness, let it not once be named among you as becometh saints. Look at verse 4. Neither filthiness. There it is again. Another word to describe that uncleanness, filthiness. All right? Paul used that word often. Another place he said filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, all right? That word filthiness describes anything that's not pleasing to God that's sinful or off color or dirty, uh, things of that nature. Neither filthiness, watch this, watch this, verse 4, nor foolish talking. Is that what your Bible says? Nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient. Convenient. That word convenient means suitable or appropriate. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Then he goes back in verse number five and begins talking about immorality, sexual sins. He talks about no whoremonger nor unclean person. There's that word unclean again. An unclean person. No hermonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous person. There it is again. There's that covetousness. Who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So he's talking about a lot of really bad things. Idolatry, covetousness, fornication, whoremongering, all these things. Horrible, horrible sins. And right in the middle of this, He talks about stuff that doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Foolish talking, jesting. What's that got to do with covetousness? What's that got to do with fornication and and whoremonger? What's that got to do with idolatry? I couldn't help but notice the emphasis that is placed on the communication. All right? Are y'all with me this morning? I don't have an outline, okay? If you're waiting for an outline, there's not one. But I do want to preach for a little bit on that thought, foolish talking. Foolish talking. Now listen to me. There's a lot of foolish talking that goes on. But I I I want to just explain what he's talking about here. That foolish talking and that jesting is talking about things that are sinful. All right? Now, nobody loves to cut up more than I do. I love to cut up. If you spend any time with me, I'm going to give you a dad joke. I don't even care if you laugh. I'm going to give you a dad joke or two or ten. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in. If we're on a long road trip, we're going to spend a little bit of that time telling jokes. I like to cut up. I like to pick on people. I like to tease people. I don't believe that's wrong. I don't believe that's what he's talking about here. But I do believe this. I do believe that what he's talking about here, when he says filthiness nor foolish talking, that's talking like a fool. 
Okay, that's talking about things that fools talk about. Nor jesting. That is a person that laughs and makes jokes out of the things that we're talking about in this text. Sexual things. Okay? Inappropriate things. The world has succeeded in turning the most wicked, ungodly lifestyles into comedy routines. There are stand-up comedians that you cannot even listen to, you can't watch them because their whole stand-up bit is nothing but sexual jokes, perverted jokes, off-color jokes, ungodly things. That's what that's talking about here. The really thing that, 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 that was on my heart this morning uh, was this was burden right here. Verse number six, let no man deceive you with vain words. Don't get caught up into that. This whole context right here has, a, there keeps being multiple references to the things people talk about. Let no man deceive you, verse number six, with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Look at verse seven. But be ye not therefore partakers with them. Don't be a part of that conversation. Don't be a part of that lifestyle. Don't be a part of that whole, that whole jesting and laughing about things that are sinful and wicked, things that God has condemned, things that God judges, things that the Bible is very clear that is wrong. You don't talk about those things. You don't sit around and laugh about those things. You don't make fun of those things. Being ye not therefore partakers with them. Verse number eight, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So the people that are talking about those things, the people that are living in a life of fornication and whoremongering and idolatry and covetousness, those are the children of darkness. You're children of light. So when you put light in a room where there's darkness, those two things can't coexist. You understand that, right? You can't sit around in a room full of people talking about wicked things and you are the children of light and they're the children of darkness. That doesn't work. He says in verse number 11, and have no, well, let's, let's look at verse number uh, nine and 10. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, your conversation, the things you talk about should fall in that category in verse number nine. Goodness and righteousness and truth. Those are the things you ought to be talking about. And it goes on and says in verse number 10, proving what is acceptable under the Lord. That word acceptable means pleasing or things that God sanctions and approves your conversation. Stay with me. Your conversation should be to the place to where if Jesus Christ were to walk around the corner and come join the conversation, you wouldn't have to change the subject. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about a conversation that is, that is, that is, that is a pure, that is holy, that is righteous, that is acceptable. And he says in verse number 11, to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So if you're, if you're somewhere and some of your friends walk up or complete strangers walk up and they want to start talking about these things that the Bible says in verse number three and four and five are unclean things, they're, they're, they're inappropriate things, that the Bible says you don't, you don't, fellowship with those unfruitful works of darkness, but rather you reprove them. And all you got to say is, I don't want to talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. That's not something we ought to be talking about. You shouldn't be talking about that. You shouldn't be saying that. I don't want to hear that. That's what that means in verse number 11. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather prove them. Look at verse 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Well, what's, what's done in secret? Fornication's done in secret. Covetousness and idolatry and whoremongering's done in secret. He says it's a shame even to talk about it. So the context of all these verses really is kind of centering around 
being a follower of Christ, being a follower of God, walking in love, and, 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 and all of these things that are, that are not acceptable conversation. Some of the biggest problems that young people have starts when they start talking amongst themselves with people about things they've got no business talking about. Listen to me. Long before you fornicate, you will be talking about it. Before you ever start fornicating, you will listen to somebody else talk about their fornicating. Before you ever get involved in those horrible sins, before you ever allow yourself to get to that point, you already have been desensitized to the seriousness of it by talking about it, laughing about it, joking about it, talking about it with people that come and say, oh, guess what I did? And I got to do this, and I went and did this, and, 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 and nobody knows this, but I did this, and I snuck around and did this, and you're intrigued by their sin, and you allow yourself to get sucked into that conversation, and the next thing you know, now your mind is beginning to think about ways that you can do that, and before you ever get to that place, you have already allowed yourself to sin by being a part of the foolish talking. Don't do it. I look back now over my life, and even as a young person, even as a teenager, as a teenager, I look back now, there was something inside of me that was so repulsed by this kind of conversation I still to this day, I'm absolutely shocked. I'm not just shocked at what people do. I'm not just shocked at the sin that they get involved in. I am shocked at how bold they are to tell people about it. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. And now it's on another level where people will not just go and do things that the Bible is clearly forbidding, but they will take pictures of themselves doing it, post it on social media so that all their friends can like it and heart it. That's what we're talking about right here. My brother and my sister, when we were growing up, would not even tell me what they were doing. That's how dogmatic I was about this as a teenager. My brother and sister would not even tell me what they were doing. They told each other, but they did not tell me. Hey, they knew I was not going to listen to it. I wasn't going to listen to it. I wasn't going to cover for them. It's getting quiet in here, ain't it? I cannot imagine how backslid and how carnal you got to be to be so proud of your sin that you want everybody to know it and you talk about it. And I can't imagine being so weak that you would listen to somebody else brag about their sin. I'm going to be honest with you. I would be offended. I would be so offended, Brother Payne, if I thought that you thought you could tell me about your sin and I would listen to it. That would be an insult to me. If, if, if one of the men in the church jumped in the truck and on the way to the store said, guess what I did this weekend? And started bragging about their sin, thinking that I was going to be okay with it, that would be one of the greatest insults for them to think that I would be okay with. Are y'all getting this? A person that will brag about their sin to you has no respect for your walk with God. None. I'm going to say that again. A person that will open up to you and talk to you about their fornication and their sin has no respect for your testimony. None. You might have some people fooled, but you ain't got that person fooled. It's unbelievable at what people talk about. Oh, I saw this video. You got to see this video. And it's not just young people. Adults do it too. 
They take each other into each other's confidence and they sit around and do what the Bible says, let it not once be named among you. Do not let it once be named among you as becometh saints. Uncleanliness, filthiness, foolish talking and jesting, sitting around talking about sin, talking about sinful things, talking about wicked things like it's nothing. I've had people tell me things as a pastor, as a pastor sitting in an office and they come to me and they need counsel and talk to me. And I feel like I need to go take a shower when they get done. And many times I will say to them, you ain't got to tell me all that. I don't need to know all the details. We're not Catholics. I'm not the priest. This is not a confessional booth. Well, I feel like I need to talk to somebody. You go talk to Jesus. I've said that many times. You do need to talk to somebody. You do need to get this out, but not to me. I don't need to hear this. What you need to do is go in your prayer closet and shut the door and confess all this to God and ask forgiveness and let him wash you and clean, cleanse you and come out of that prayer closet clean. But you don't need to talk about it to your friends. And any person that would let you talk to them about your sin is not your friend. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a friend sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. The Bible says I almost preach this morning on what kind of friends you need. I worked on three different messages in the last hour and a half. What kind of friends you need. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, the Bible says. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. That's a friend that will look at you and tell you, shut up. That's a friend that will look at you and say, stop right there. What you're doing is wrong. That girl you're talking to is bad news. That boy you're talking to is bad news. You say, oh, that hurt me. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. A real friend will look you right in the face and say, I love you, but what you're doing is wrong and you need to stop it right now. They're not going to sit around and laugh and joke and cut up and make fun and make light of serious, serious sinful things. That's in person. That's through text messages. That's on the phone. That's on the internet, chat rooms. It's unbelievable at the foolish talking, the filthiness, the ungodliness that goes on. I thought about just some examples in the Bible of good, wholesome conversation. Let me just give you a couple of them. I thought about Elijah and Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse number 11. I've preached this passage of scripture often. This is the day that Elijah got caught up by that chariot of fire in 2 Kings chapter number 2. I'm going to give you three or four examples here. I just scribbled them on a piece of paper while y'all was in here singing. The Bible says in verse number 11, and it came to pass as they still want, went on and talked. Elijah and Elisha walking down the road, talking. Look up here. What do you reckon they were talking about? What was those two men of God talking about? What was Elijah and Elisha talking about? I can tell you what they wasn't talking about. They weren't talking about their fornicating. They weren't talking about their idolatry. They weren't talking about their covetousness. They weren't talking about some filthy movie they snuck around and watched. They weren't talking about some YouTube video that they saw that had a lot of bad words and stuff in it. They weren't talking about that. I can 1,000% guarantee you these two men were not talking about that. That was not foolish talking. I thought about another example. I thought about... Um, Luke chapter 24. Look at Luke 24. You got to see this right here. 
Luke chapter 24. Mm. Look at verse number 13. And behold, two of them, the disciples, went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. Look at verse 14. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. What are they talking about? Well, they're talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what they're talking about. Are y'all getting this? These two men, these two disciples are walking down the road together, nobody but just them. And you know what they chose to talk about? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're talking about it. They're just talking about it. That, that's wholesome conversation, by the way. Look at verse 15. It came to pass that while they commune together, they're having communion. They're having fellowship. What communion hath light with darkness? None. What fellowship hath, hath righteousness with unrighteousness? None. None. These two men are talking about the resurrection. They're talking about the empty tomb. They're talking about Jesus being crucified. They saw him crucified. They took him down off the cross. They wrapped his body up in a hundred pounds of aloe and myrrh and put him in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Three days later, they went back and he's gone. That's what they're talking about. They're communing. They're communing. Bible says, and reasoning together. They're working this out. They're trying, to, they're trying to talk about this. Verse number 15. While they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Let me ask you a question. Stay with me. Are the things you're talking about with your friends a conversation and an atmosphere that would invite the very presence of Jesus Christ to join in the conversation. I certainly hope so. I, I'd love to think of all the times that I have had conversations with my friends, church members, men in the church, preachers, even my family, going down the road, on the phone many times, talking about the things of God, talking about the goodness of God, talking about what God's doing in our church or doing in my heart, what God's doing in my life. And lo and behold, I looked up, guess who joined the conversation? Jesus showed up. While they were talking, Jesus joined them. The Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. You want God to show up while you're talking to your friends? Talk about the right things. And I promise you, I guarantee you, he will. A lot of times when we have a visiting preacher come in here and preach revival, we have staff meetings, not every morning, but we try to have several a week so we can make sure that everything gets done. But we use that time to do what I'm preaching about right now. We talk about what God's doing. They get to hear the stories about the emails and the phone calls and the letters from people that says, I got saved watching your service or whatever. We get to talk about those things and we share prayer requests and we always get down, always get down, always get down and pray before we leave. A lot of times we'll bring a preacher in for a revival And I'll shoot him a text message and I'll say, we're having a staff meeting at nine o'clock. Having some coffee. You want to join us? Oh, yeah. Those are some highlights of the year for me. To bring these men of God in. Brother Buster Mullins. Brother Ray Bearden. Bring them in and we just talk. We just talk about Things. We get talking about God and talking about what God's doing and who God is, how wonderful He is, and how wonderful it is serving Him. And they'll share stories. 
about answered prayer. They'll share stories about miracles that they've seen done in their ministry. And we'll just sit around and spitball and kick things around. It'll start about nine o'clock and we'll look up sometimes and it's nearly lunchtime. Just sitting there. Notice this. Look at this. Bible says in verse 15, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. And he said in verse number 17, what manner of communications are these? <laughs> what are y'all talking about? You look sad. Well, they were sad because they were, they didn't understand all this about the resurrection, but they were talking about it. They were in a good place. And they went on and they talked in verse number 27, Jesus beginning at Moses and all the prophets expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Which Ted Tyrus preached this whole passage. But look at verse 32. They said, wow, while he talked with us, by the way, <laughs> did not our hearts burn within us? Brother Adriel, I thought of this. The conversations we can have can cause our heart to burn or it could cause our face to burn with shame. What kind of conversations are you having? Let me, let me, let me show you something else. Let me show you another one. Y'all got time for a couple more? Look at, uh, look at Matthew 17. Turn back to Matthew chapter number 17. Matthew chapter number 17. This kind of stuff fascinates me. Chapter Matthew 17, verse 1. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, verse 3, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. What do you reckon? What do you reckon they were talking about? Moses died way back in, the, back in the book of Exodus, I believe it is. Went up on top of Mount Nebo. Am I right, Brother Groves? Mount Nebo. God showed him all the Canaan land, showed him all the things that he had promised. And then he died at the age of 120. The Bible says his eyes were not dimmed and his strength was not abated. And God buried Moses on top of that mountain. And then Elijah, we just talked about him, got caught up in a whirlwind by a chair of fire. And now here they are. <laughs> here they are talking to Jesus on top of Mount of Transfiguration. <laughs> Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. What do you reckon they were talking about? I know what they wasn't talking about. They weren't talking about fornicating. They weren't talking about covetousness. They weren't talking about idolatry. I don't know what they were talking about, but I can 1,000% guarantee you it was not foolish talking and jesting. They were talking. I have wondered so many times, Brother Gene, what were they talking about? I can't even begin to imagine. What kind of a conversation do you have With Moses and Elijah. You say, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying this. There are a lot of things you can talk about besides bad stuff. If that's all you ever find yourself talking about, you need to get saved. You either need to get saved or you need to get an altar and you need to get thoroughly right with God. Because there's a whole lot of amazing things to talk about besides sin. Turn with me over to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter number 20. Is everybody all right? Acts chapter number 20. Paul is preaching. A place called Troas in verse number 6. The Bible says in verse number 7, upon the first day of the week, 
When the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight. Now, I don't know what time they started. It don't really matter what time they started. He preached a long time. <laughs> Let's just be honest. He preached a long time. Could you imagine church starting at 7 o'clock? He was preaching at midnight. That's a lot of time. Oh, he's just getting started. In this story, there was a young man named Eutychus. The place was so full, he couldn't find anywhere to see it. And he went and sat down in the window sill. Now, they didn't have windows like we've got. We don't even have windows, okay? <laughs> but imagine there being a window in that wall. We got window panes and sashes and all that. Their windows was just open. They'd have, they'd have a pair of shutters, keep the wind out. He's sitting in the window on the third story, third loft. Bible says that he sunk down with sleep. Fell asleep during the preaching, like some of y'all do when I'm preaching in chapel. The only difference is I didn't preach for five hours. Bible says he sunk down with sleep, fell from the third loft. Okay, fell from the third loft. How many of y'all ever fell out of the bed? I mean, if I mean, if you ever fell out of the top bunk of a bed, bunk bed, I did one time at Brother Sammy's camp, onto a concrete floor and never woke up. I woke up next morning. I was in the bed with my daddy. I'm like, what in the world am I doing? He said, you fell out of the bed last night. I was like, really? He said, yeah, it sounded like a sack of potatoes hitting the floor. I never woke up. He fell out of the third floor window. And the Bible says it was taken up dead. I reckon so. Boom! The Bible says that Paul ran down and embraced him, fell on his neck and embraced him and said, trouble not yourselves. It's right there. His life is in him. They went back upstairs. Are you ready for this? And talked till the breaking of day. Huh? That's what it says. Verse number 11, and when he therefore was come up again and broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. What do you reckon he talked about? What do you reckon those church members and the apostle Paul talked about from midnight till dawn? I know what they wasn't talking about. They wasn't talking about each other's fornicating. They wasn't taking selfies of themselves in their sin and posting it on their social media. No, they were talking about spiritual things, wholesome things, godly things. So preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying there's a whole lot of good things you can talk about. But if every time you get with your friends, your mind and your conversation gravitates to the gutter, you either need to get saved or you need to get thoroughly right with God. Because he said, let it not once be named among the saints. I want you to turn. I want everybody in here to turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We're going to close with this right here. I want you to see this. Verse 33. Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his tr fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What you talk about reveals your heart. The fruit of a tree reveals the kind of tree that it is. Look at verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words 
thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? You can find out what kind of person. You can find out if it's an evil person or a good person by what they talk about. Straight up. And God said, one day we're going to stand before God and we're going to give an account for every idle word. Every single solitary conversation that you had. Face to face, online, texting, emailing, social media, comments, all of it. Every bit of it. That's what it's talking about right there. Can I close with this? Let it not once be named among the saints. Talking about things only fools talk about. Pianist is coming. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. There's no question in my mind. Several dozen of you need to get in this altar. Several dozen. Some of you need to ask the Holy Spirit of God to help you. You've developed such a habit.